So I want to start by talking about the election. Uh, of course, there has been something of a rally in pharma stocks with folks thinking maybe the pricing pressure will be off. We just heard this morning here at the conference Brent Saunders saying anybody who thinks that is fooling themselves. What do you think about drug pricing under Trump? Well, I agree with Brent. I think drug pricing is an important issue. I think the most important thing, though, is that we not look at drug pricing in isolation. We have to look at it as the overall health care spending that we have in our society and how can we allocate resources to get the most out of our health care spending. So what you've heard from Trump has been not much about drug pricing and that's why people seem to be pretty happy I guess about about his election at least from an investment standpoint. What he has said is he would repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. What impact would that have on your business? Well, I think it depends on how they go about it. I think it's much too early in the process to speculate. I think the great thing about the Affordable Care Act is obviously that we have 20 million Americans who have coverage who didn't have coverage before. But I think everybody agrees that there are ways in which we can strengthen and improve how that coverage is provided. One thing that Trump has said, uh, or at least expressed some support for in the past, is reimportation of drugs from other companies where they're priced more cheaply. If that were made possible, how would that affect your industry? Well, I don't think it's going to be made possible. I think that, if, for example, when you have a person like Tom Price, who's now being asked to be head of HHS, I think when the Trump administration takes a step back, they will realize that. Uh, if they haven't already, that this concept of bringing drugs in from outside the United States is actually a dangerous concept because we won't be able to guarantee the safety of those drugs. Every time we've tried to do that, no FDA commissioner has ever been willing to certify the safety of those drugs. Mm -hmm. Uh, another issue that's been in the news recently has been Alzheimer's disease, of course, with Eli Lilly's disappointing trial results last week. You have a big stake in Alzheimer's going after a similar target, amyloid, this amyloid hypothesis, removing the plaques in the brain. How does Lilly's result affect uh, how full steam ahead you're going here? Well, first of all, our drug is a base inhibitor, and it works by preventing plaque, not removing plaque. So it's a fundamentally different mechanism. And we think that based on the human genetics data and the early clinical data that we see, that this is a legitimate test of the amyloid hypothesis. So we continue to have great hopes. We have two large-scale studies, one in people who have mild to moderate, which we'll read out in July of next year, and another one in pre-Alzheimer's patients, which we'll read out in 2019. So we're very hopeful. Obviously, the world needs needs a disease modifying agent for this horrible disease. A lot of people have said maybe we're not putting enough attention on other approaches to Alzheimer's. Is that something that Merck is looking at and or do you think the government uh, will have enough support to do the basic research in Alzheimer's that we need to move this forward? Well, I think the world needs companies that are working on multiple targets, and Merck is working on multiple targets. And I think, obviously, we're in the very early stages of understanding the brain, and I, I know that we will make progress in the next few years. We have to. Of course, um, just yesterday, passing through the House is the 21st Century Cures Act, which includes a lot of funding for the NIH. What is your expectation of what that bill would do if it gets through the Senate and gets signed into law? I think, first of all, that's a great thing. I think continuing to support the work of NIH, which has not been supported financially as well as a country we should have done that over the last few years, is a good thing. We need to support basic research, but I also think that certain approaches to speed approvals, and by the way, I must say the FDA has done a fabulous job with a drug like Keytruda. They've got that drug to patients very quickly, but anything that helps us speed those drugs while maintaining the safety of new drugs and treatments is a good thing. Well, just about out of time, but can't leave it without asking you about cancer. You said here that we're in the early stages of treating cancer with immunotherapy, similar to where we were at the early stages of HIV. Where would you say we're going to be in 10 years with treating cancer? Can we control this, make it into a real chronic disease? Well, I hope that that's the case. I mean, we are just beginning to understand these checkpoint inhibitors. Key true to, we have 400 clinical studies underway. And we have more drugs in the pipeline that affect uh, these T cells. I hope that we'll be able to sit here in 10 years and say about cancer exactly what we say about HIV. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.